Everyone loves watching a well-trained fighter carve their way through a battlefield. But the truth is, even a lone wolf with enough strength to rival an entire army has a guardian angel watching their back. Sometimes when the shit really hits the fan, that angel will descend from the heavens with a righteous indignation. And when that happens, just sit back and enjoy the show. The Attunement of Grace is Destiny 2's first true support subclass. All of its offensive abilities have buffing or healing components attached to them, and when used by a competent player will carry a team to victory. This is one of the more complex subclass branches in Destiny 2, but it's not impossible to learn. So let's get started with the overview. The most interesting and integral ability in the Attunement of Grace branch is Divine Protection. This ability allows you to convert a normal damaging grenade into a healing grenade. When charged up and thrown directly at a player, their shields and health are fully restored and they get a small overshield. When thrown at the ground, it places an orb on the field at the point of impact that players can run through and pick up to receive the same effects. That orb is also placed on the ground when you directly hit a player with the Divine Protection grenade. This ability is simple in its application, and that ease of use acts as a gateway to your final ability. Whenever you heal or empower an ally, you gain a buff called Benevolent Dawn that increases the recharge rate of your abilities for 5 seconds. Benevolent Dawn can be triggered by your empowering or healing rift, healing grenades, and melee ability, which we'll talk about in a moment, but the healing grenade is the easiest way to trigger the Benevolent Dawn buff. From my experiences raiding with a coordinated team and running strikes with random players, people don't tend to utilize your rifts as much as they they can or should, so it's up to you to bring the healing or damage buffs to them. The easiest and safest way to do that is throwing a divine protection grenade at their face. If you don't have a grenade available, then running to a teammate and plopping a rift down next to them works too. The idea is, the more you use your abilities for support, the more support you get to provide. Although this attunement is designed around a static, defensive approach to battle, it has the means to facilitate mobility and aggression as well. Your melee ability is called Guiding Flame. After striking an enemy, you deal very minor burn damage over time, but you grant yourself and nearby allies the Empowered buff, which increases their weapon damage dealt for 5 seconds. Triggering this buff on allies will grant you the Benevolent Dawn buff. Lastly, the super ability for the Attunement of Grace is Well of Radiance. On activation, you place down a giant rift that lasts for 30 seconds and you generate two orbs. The Well of Radiance heals, empowers, and grants an overshield to all friendly units inside. It damages enemies on activation and burns them for a few seconds, but does not continue damaging them while standing inside the area of effect. The Well of Radiance can be destroyed in the Crucible by shooting at the sword at the center of the rift, so I imagine it can be destroyed in PvE as well, but I've never had that happen before. Well of Radiance also takes on properties granted to rifts by exotic equipment like the Lunifaction Boots and Starfire Protocol. And there we go, those are all the abilities for the Attunement of Grace. And you're probably thinking, Rob, that was not as complex as you made it out to be at the start of the video. Well, we're just getting started. Exotic armor selection for this attunement has a big effect on how it will play, and understanding these exotics is key. The way I see it, there are two ways to play the Attunement of Grace, as a healer or as a buff bitch. Both playstyles have their strengths and weaknesses, and exotics help to facilitate that playstyle. The healing playstyle might seem a bit dull depending on your perspective, but keeping your team alive is very rewarding, especially when you save them from a close call. The Stag and Vesper of Radius are two exotics that will provide you with additional rift energy. The Stag grants bonus rift energy when you're critically wounded, and the Vesper provides rift energy when surrounded by enemies. The Stag allows you to play conservatively and still generate bonus rift energy frequently. The Vesper has the potential to generate more rift energy, but it only does so if you play very aggressively. For the buff bitch options, we've got Verity's Brow, Starfire Protocol, and the Sun Bracers. Verity's Brow is, in my opinion, the most underrated Warlock exotic in the game, and I hope to one day make it more popular. Energy Weapon Kills grant a buff to you and all nearby allies that increases their grenade recharge rate. For you, this means you can use your grenades offensively and still have a steady flow of grenade energy, especially if you're stacking grenade cooldown reduction mods. It'll be up to you to decide what's more important in the moment, healing or damage. Starfire Protocol will make you the definitive king of damage buffs and damage output. This exotic grants you an additional fusion grenade charge and causes empowered weapon damage to grant you fusion grenade energy. This means while you're standing in an empowering rift or empowered from your guiding flame melee, weapon damage grants fusion grenade energy. 
fusion grenade kills also refresh your empowering rift. With the Starfire protocol equipped, you'll literally have an empowering rift active and a fusion grenade ready for healing or damage for every moment of a strike, nightfall, or raid encounter. Finally, my personal favorite Dawnblade exotic, especially for the buff bitch play style, is the Sun Bracers. These gloves dramatically increase your personal offensive power by increasing the duration of the solar grenade. They also cause solar melee ability kills to reset your grenade and grant you unlimited grenade energy for 5 seconds. While that effect is active, you've got the option to throw multiple grenades for damage or healing. You can throw a maximum of 5 solar grenades after triggering the exotic perk, or you can throw 3 healing grenades. There aren't many situations I can think of that would require that many healing grenades, so I'd like to follow a specific rotation when using the sun bracers to optimize damage, healing, and the benevolent dawn buff. Throw out a solar grenade, kill an enemy with your melee ability, refresh your grenade, throw four more grenades, and charge your final grenade into a heal to proc Benevolent Dawn. Following this rotation will allow you to dish out an insane amount of damage very quickly and refresh your melee ability so you can do it all again. As a side note, multiple solar grenades don't stack damage on a single target, so if you're burning down a boss, pun intended, space out your grenades with shooting for maximum effectiveness. Okay, now that was a lot of information, but we've got a little bit more to talk about. For armor mods, grenade cooldown reduction is a great choice for most builds with the Attunement of Grace, but if you're using the Sun Bracers or Starfire Protocol, melee cooldown reduction is better. With the Sun Bracers, more melee ability kills means more solar grenades, and for the Starfire Protocol, the empowered buff provided by your melee allows you to proc the exotic perk without the use of empowering rift. This will allow you to be more mobile. For your weapon selection, I'd recommend picking something that works well with the way your team likes to play. Since you need to buff or heal them to proc Benevolent Dawn, having a weapon that operates in a similar range to theirs will help you stay by their side and providing support. Armor perks are mostly preferential, but I'm fond of the fastball perk on gloves. I find it makes it easier to throw healing grenades at allies when they travel farther and faster. To wrap things up, the Attunement of Grace is the king of support. Your goal should be to keep your teammates healed and empowered as much as possible. If your teammates don't like to stand in your rifts for their full duration, don't be mad at them. Follow them around and place the rift close by them instead. If they touch it, even if just for a second, you'll get Benevolent Dawn to proc and your cooldowns will get reduced. If you're not interested in chasing people around, throw Divine Protection Grenades near where they're fighting so they can pick it up and heal. Finally, consider your exotic armor selection very carefully. The Dawnblade specific exotics encourage specific playstyles that should be adhered to for the best results. And there we go. The Attunement of Grace has a relatively simple and easy to understand kit, but applying the tools that it has effectively and efficiently can be difficult. Your situational awareness needs to be at a very high level if you're going to use this subclass effectively. But the longer you stick with it, the better you'll become, and your teammates will definitely thank you for saving their asses. With all of that said, we're going to wrap things up here by saying the name of the game is Destiny 2. The name of the channel is iBlueAirJGR. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Let me know how you feel about playing a healer in Destiny 2 and in other games. Do you enjoy it, or do you feel like people don't appreciate you for keeping them alive? Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.